External hard drives are really popular even in the enthusiast tech community and that's because if you want to back up your PC or transfer some large files then popping off your side panel, running some internal cables and probably having to reboot your PC as well just isn't that practical. But external drives are just regular drives with USB to SATA converters in them, right? Well, yeah, I mean, here's the insides of a couple of external drives I had. They're literally just small circuit boards with USB to SATA converters on them. And if it's for a particularly large drive, then it may have an additional power connector as well. But then surely there's a way for the PC master race to DIY something like this for themselves. Oh, I am so glad you asked. Hey everyone, it's Frank here. Welcome back to Jaeger Tech. This video came about because I've had SATA data and power cables hanging out the back of my PC for far too long now so that I can transfer data off of hard drives and SSDs and it's just becoming too annoying. The goal here is to add connectors to the outside of my PC so that I can plug in hard drives like the USB flash drives and transfer data off of them. You can actually already buy USB to SATA adapters that power and transfer data through one USB port off of two and a half inch drives like SSDs. The problem is that these don't work on three and a half inch drives like your standard internal hard drives because they require 12 volts and USB can only output five volts and 12 volts can't be supplied by any connector on the outside of your PC. So that's the main problem that we need to get around here. My idea for how to do this is actually really basic. Like a lot of my mods, really. Huh. What I'm gonna do is take an expansion slot cover and cut holes in it so that I can poke Molex connectors through straight from my power supply to power the hard drives. Now you can actually already buy things like this ready-made, believe it or not. But for Molex connectors poking through an expansion slot cover, they seem a bit pricey. So fuck that noise, we'll make one ourselves. For data transfer, you could run an extension cable for your SATA on your motherboard and poke it through the expansion slot cover next to your Molex connectors. But this can still run into plug and play problems and you might have to restart your PC for the drives to become discovered. So what I intend to do is use a USB 3 to SATA adapter because USB 3 is actually capable of almost the full data transfer speed of SATA and so you won't bottleneck any hard drives and will only slightly bottleneck good quality SSDs and even then it's not by much, you probably won't even notice it at all. Just make sure that you get a USB 3 and not a USB 2 adapter and you won't cripple your drives. Okay, I've actually done a lot of the work for this already, and that's because it only occurred to me, like, halfway through making it, that it might be an interesting video. So here we are. Basically what I've done so far is drill these holes in an expansion slot cover, and push a couple of Molex connectors through. I've used female Molex connectors, so what you would normally get on a power supply are male connectors, but because I have so many male connectors that I've pulled off of dead power supplies, this is like, not even all of the ones I have. I'm going to use the small amount of female connectors I have to make this and then I can make as many connectors as I want to adapt this using the male connectors I have. Now they're just in there at the moment as like a friction fit so I've just pushed them through but I think I will want to secure them with glue or something um, or silicon would probably be the best bet just because I don't want to have to try and plug something in and pop the connector out the back that would be really frustrating. Uh, also what I've done here is like if you had a male harness just straight from your power supply, you could put them through here, you could put two or even three on a single expansion slot, um, and you know how they're like daisy chained together, and just have the spare cable laying there. But what I'm doing is I'm putting these two through, and then I've spliced the wires for each pin together, so that I'm just reducing the amount of cable bulk I have. And I've got some cable sleeving here, so I'm going to be sleeving this. So I need to solder the rest of the cable on and sleeve it, and then we will come back and see what it looks like.
Of course, the best way to do this is, as always, not the way that I did it. What you should do is just take your Molex connectors straight from the power supply and push them through the holes that you cut in the expansion slot cover. You won't have to re-pin any of the connectors. You don't need to know what voltage anything's running at. It's literally just a cut and stick job. Now to test this hard drive that I have here to make sure that this system actually works and won't blow up my PC, I'm gonna use one of the adapters I showed you earlier. So this came out of an external hard drive and this is just because my USB 3 to SATA like adapter that I can plug into hasn't arrived yet. So let's finish plugging this in, see if it spins up and gets recognized in Windows. Now, the only real chance you'd have a, of a bottleneck using this system is in the adapter itself. So make sure you get a USB 3 to SATA adapter and also read the reviews and make sure nobody is reporting that it caused their hard drives to run slower than they were used to. Here we are, initialized, all booting up fine. I'll run crystal disk mark just on this hard drive to see what sort of speeds we're getting, but this is probably gonna work fine. Also, one of the advantages to this is you don't just have to plug in hard drives, you can plug in whatever you want. It's a Molex connector, right? Or you could, you know, if you're running SATA connectors, still SATA connector, you can plug in adapters to change it to being able to power fans, LEDs. There's been a lot of times where I'd wanted to plug in some hardware really quickly just to test that it works or to see how loud a fan was or see what some LEDs looked like. And of course not been able to because there's no 12 volts out the back of my PC. But with this, I can do whatever I want and it's gonna be really useful for doing things like that in the future. In short, I'm really happy I did this. It's gonna be so useful for testing hardware as well as transferring data. And I can't believe it's taken me this long. I've actually intended to do this for months now. Anyway, everyone, thank you all for watching. Let me know what you thought of this video and the mod down below. And please check out my channel for some more videos and consider subscribing. But that's it for now. This has been Frank Yeager with Yeager Tech. Have a good one.